Brazil's young democracy has been through a lot in recent years, and under the Bolsonaro administration it has really been put to the test. In this video, we'll see how Brazilian democracy went from a hopeful dream to an imperiled achievement in just over three decades. In 1985, after 21 years of military dictatorship, Brazilians chose their first civilian president through an indirect election. Tancredo Neves died before taking office, but his vice president, José Sarney, took over. During Sarney's government, in 1988, a new constitution was approved and enshrined Brazil's new democracy, inaugurating the Nova República, or New Republic. Since then, Brazil has only had eight direct elections for president. The first one, in 1989, quite memorable, was won by centre-right candidate Fernando Collor, who was impeached two years later. After that, by creating a new currency, the Itamar Franco and Fernando Henrique Cardoso governments managed to control hyperinflation and the country experienced unprecedented political stability. This stability was largely maintained following the arrival to power of Lula and his Workers' Party. The same macroeconomic guidelines were kept in place and social programmes were continued and enhanced. But after the country was engulfed by crisis in 2013, and especially after the 2018 elections, Brazil experienced unprecedented political turbulence. Authoritarian claims by far-right supporters have become more frequent. Nostalgia for the dictatorship and criticism of the Supreme Court are just some factors that could be signalling an authoritarian shift. The leading proponent of these authoritarian tendencies was Congress backbencher Jair Bolsonaro. During his vote for the impeachment of then-President Dilma Rousseff in 2016, Jair Bolsonaro honoured the colonel who tortured Dilma during the military dictatorship. Bolsonaro, long known to be openly critical of the Supreme Court and Congress and infamous for his homophobic and sexist statements, was then elected president. This led to a major shift in Congress, driving the election of a majority of Conservative representatives riding on Bolsonaro's coattails. With the most conservative Congress elected since 1964, as well as governors and mayors supporting his project, Bolsonaro had huge political capital in 2018. Bolsonaro, his supporters and elected allies thus felt comfortable bringing authoritarian activism to the centre of Brazilian politics, setting alarm bells ringing for Brazilian democracy from time to time. Since taking office, Bolsonaro has attacked Brazilian institutions, and even though he won the 2018 elections, he repeatedly claimed that the electronic voting system was rigged against him that year. And in April 2020, his superstar Justice Minister Sergio Moro resigned, accusing Bolsonaro of interfering in police investigations that involved his family. Despite Bolsonaro rejecting these accusations, the government quickly fired the head of the federal police. And during the pandemic, the president entered into a legal battle with the Supreme Court over leaving lockdown and health decisions entirely up to the federal government, which he lost. Bolsonaro also came to the brink of sending troops to the Supreme Court in May 2020, according to a report by Piauí magazine. In 2021, Bolsonaro mobilised his supporters for huge rallies in his favour on September 7th. Once again, the president attacked Supreme Court Justice Alexandre de Moraes, saying that he would no longer obey rulings issued by the court. As the 2022 election approached, Bolsonaro turned his attention to the electronic voting system. He intensified his ambiguous declarations about the risk of fraud and what he would do if he thought the election was rigged. Bolsonaro reached the point of organising a keynote speech for ambassadors and the international media to explain the risks of fraud in Brazil's elections, but without providing any evidence. Bolsonaro's declarations have raised the spectre of a coup in everyday political discussions in Brazil, and his attacks have concrete impacts. The army has requested access to the vote counting system for this election, and plans to carry out a parallel vote count this weekend. This could provide Bolsonaro with the ammunition he needs to question the results of the poll and create the conditions for a January 6-like situation in Brazil, which could be the greatest test faced by Brazilian democracy in its short history. <laughs>